It's been 18 months since Trayvon Martin went from a Florida teenager just trying to get home from the store on a rainy night to one of the most recognizable faces in America. Right alongside him, almost from the very beginning, was another face with whom we have recently become intimately familiar, front and center as a regular presence at George Zimmerman's trial. Sabrina Fulton, Trayvon's mother, was the very picture of grace and poise as she shared her quiet grief with the nation. So this week, I wanted to address my letter to her, both the public figure who has been a conduit for community in mourning and the private person, a mother surviving after her own personal loss. Dear Sabrina, it's me, Melissa. Thursday night, you and Trayvon's father sat down with Reverend Sharpton to talk about your thoughts and feelings in response to the trial of the man who killed your son. And when I saw that you were here in 30 Rock, I immediately went to the studio where you were being interviewed because I wanted to be in the room with you. Over the past year and a half, I have written and spoken so much about your son. I, I have thought about and questioned and analyzed the issues raised by the way he died, the events that followed his death, and, and what it all says about how our nation failed your boy. The ongoing interest and attention that, I, that all of us really have paid to your son's story are due in large part to your tireless efforts and advocacy on his behalf. When you were cast into the part no woman wants to play, the grieving mother seeking justice for her child, you took on your role admirably. You stepped onto the national stage alongside the women who came before you, carrying our collective sorrow on their shoulders. Coretta, after she lost Martin. Murley when Medgar was taken away. Mamie, who like you, was robbed of a beloved son when she lost Emmett. When we were overwhelmed by our emotions, the, the sadness, the anger, the helplessness, they, you, were what we needed you to be, a, a symbol of strength and endurance, a sign that we, like you, could and would carry on. But Sabrina, I want you to know that I see you. Not the symbol or the sign, but the human being, the mother who lost her son, the woman knitting herself back together during every commercial break on Thursday night, stealing herself to go on, who, when asked by Reverend Sharpton what you would say to George Zimmerman, found the faith that you have turned to so often and said this. I would tell him my favorite Bible verse, which is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and I would tell him that how I felt, which is you shed innocent blood and you're going to have to account for that. And I would pray for him. I really would. So I looked up your favorite verse, Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, which reads, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Sabrina, the grace you showed with your message to George Zimmerman is beyond anything I can imagine. But what I can comprehend, what I can conjure when I look into the face of my own precious child, is just some idea of how I would feel in those private moments, when the cameras aren't on, when you've taken an entire movement off your shoulders, when there is just you in that, that little room next to the courtroom where you retreated, in those moments when it all got to be too much, when you needed to let go of your composure and just cry or, or fall on the floor or scream or shout or rage against the injustice of it all. And I want you to know, Sabrina, it is okay. And I want you to know that when you go by yourself into that private place, you do not go alone because all of our love goes with you. And I have no doubt that you will someday hear the words of Matthew 25, 21. Well done my good and faithful servant. Sincerely, Melissa.